Welcome to 20% <laughs> off with me, <laughs> Flash. Anyway, tonight we're kicking off the first Thursday show that I've ever done. And Grimner over at Real Liberty Media has been asking people to do radio on Thursday for quite a while. And I've done every day but Thursday, I think. <laughs> so I'm going to do a... This is my brand new solo project. I'm going to try to do this without anybody else except for the little things I screw up. They'll they'll come bail me out of at the end. <laughs> anyway, I'm at the RLM right now. I'm going to say hi to the folks that are uh, hanging out in the chit-chat room. That's where all the great thinking minds of the 20th century gather to judge all the losers of the world. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. We got we got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Asmo, Chloe, Chelsea, Denis, no O. Wait, no E, huh? Circle, hey, baby. Chloe again, me, I be Don, C, J, Dread, Meister, Brow, Poxified, Poxphone, Rain, RLM, Fluke, Robworks, Rome's Vinny, Phantom, Beetle, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, Gramsci, Gromit, Iva, Big One, that's me too, I had to open up the RLM, and we've got Java Doctor, underscore, Java Doctor 2, J's, Nines, J's, Kozu, Nensen, Dubois, Poxahome, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. <laughs> and I know it sounds like a grocery list at the end of that. Anyway, so I've been doing radio on the RLM for a little bit now. And I usually depend on somebody else to back me up on the show and help me with all this, the setup and the stuff I have to do afterward to, to make this all happen. And I figured I'd try Thursday and do a show alone and learn how what Grimm's got to do to make all this work. So he he got on the he got on the wire with me earlier and spent a good bit of time so I could write down the steps and you know practice and do a few things, get me a a new email account to deal with the RLM directly. These little nuances that as a non-computer guy, uh, I don't really pay attention to all this stuff. But I thought maybe it would help me do better on this if I got more involved in, in the production end of making it all come together. Anyway, so a big thanks to Grim for all the help to give me my, you know, because my hardcore 12, they still care what I think after all these years. And to start the show off, what I did was uh, my wife, I didn't even ask her tonight. To, tonight I was pretty much sold on, I was going to do this myself my way and then my wife brought something up before the show about back in the old world truth days when me and first cirque had uh, just met i had written a link about well not written a link i had written a blog about a link see my tech tired talk is just terrible <coughs> anyway about the two emotions that all emotions are based off of. And it was probably the most successful piece of writing I ever did. But unfortunately, when we lost um, WT, I didn't do anything to save all my original work off the site. And it's probably lost time. And it's out there somewhere if you know how to dig for it. But I don't trust Cause enough to ask him to do it for me. So... What I'm going to do instead is try to go off memory, best as possible, and recreate what's essentially the beginning of what led up to where I am today. And what happened was, I read this link, and it claimed that there are only two true emotions, and all other emotions are offshoots of these other two. And those two emotions are identified as love and fear. Now they visually explain it with a graph and it shows you that the wavelength of love is wide and thick. Lots of room you can have a lot of activity in your love wavelength 
but fear is a very narrow it's like the difference between a a phone line and a cable line you you're only going to get so much stuff through that little tiny fear cable cuz it's very narrow and small and what i realized about the whole thing after reading it was and i gave this many many minutes of consideration and deep deep thought on the way to um, kelly's house one night to just get the hell out of the house and and go have a drink or something maybe it was smoke a joint who knows but to get away from the house and i had this on my mind on the walk and something made me very aware that i cannot feel both love and fear at the exact same moment i have to choose one now whether it's a conscious knowledge of choice or maybe it's not maybe it's something way beyond my personal abilities you know something deep rooted and uh i brought that up because i wrote about it and it was amazing that it attracted so much attention and i wrote a lot of stuff afterward and it was some of it was funny and some of it was pretty good but never seemed to compare with that particular topic now, I don't know if that's bragging or whatever. I was just trying to identify something that I'd never really given any consideration to in, in the past before that time. Never really needed it. And I don't really know why it attracted my attention when it did, but it was right at the time I'd met Cirque. And so, I was, you know, I was a little more emotional. And, you know, I was living at, uh, taking care of my mother, actually. And it was... Uh, it was coming to an end with mom. She was getting sicker and more doctors and nurses were coming around. And at the end, I was just kind of in the way at that point. So I was available in, in the universe to find something else to do. <laughs> but who the hell knew it was going to be what I'm doing? You know, it's like, uh, I don't know. Some people have plans with their life. I've never specifically sat down and said I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that maybe it was I was going to go east or I was going to go north or south or west but destination was always a matter of subject to change anything can happen it was like the story I told about meeting the guy on the train in Derby you know going to Derby England and ending up in a place, just like he said, got the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me. And I didn't end up gutted in an alley with somebody else wearing my boots. But some part of me already knows deep down inside what those kind of people are like. So, hmm. so when I meet strangers in public and um, they want to be social, it, it's there's just a wavelength to it that most people can't get to that point with me in the first place. So if if you're that open in society that you can meet me that level, taking you to the house for a spliff and a coffee is just the next stage. Nothing unusual about it. It's probably as normal to me as driving to work or driving to your grandma's. You know, something that you've done over and over that you could do in your sleep. Anyway. So over the last five years with Cirque, I think I've really got a grip on the idea that you can't do both at once. You can't really do two anythings at once. We all think we can. But that kind of doing two things at once isn't a conscious thinking. It's way deeper. It's behind it. Like this crap they tell us about. Well, we only use 10% of our brain. I think that's a load of shit to keep people stupid. I mean, think about all the miracles your body does every day. And it's all controlled by what? Your brain. What else could control it? The weather? Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank? Uh, Trump's hair? I don't think so. Anyway, so this wavelength situation started way before Larry Woods, way before I met Rob Works, but each step led me to. I met Vinny, I met Rob, I met Larry Woods. Uh, the quality of my life through the, the assistance that these people have offered freely on the internet to every fucking buddy. They don't charge, they don't tell you to send me $20 for my help, you 
bum, don't be a drain on me, that kind of crap. They just openly tell you the truth about shit. And you have the opportunity to look at it and with your own brain decide for yourself. Hmm, baking soda cures cancer? Is that possible? Well, the FDA says nothing cures cancer. You just got to get radiated and die in five years. I'm going to go with the baking soda theory. And the reason is it's got a fucking explanation that you can explain to a 10-year-old. You know, if you pee in the swimming pool that you're swimming in, it's going to stink. 500 people in the swimming pool and 500 people pee in that pool, it's going to be pee soup. Some people have to be taught these things beyond what I would call... uh, average you know because i got taught the early stuff you know things like what other people ignore and pass over and don't give two shits about i care a lot about and the stuff that keeps everybody else awake at night sweating watching television sets to see how their stocks are doing could give two shits about it but pee in the pool and i might i might have a moment with you over something stupid like that but if the you know the house burns down I'm the guy that starts cleaning up the mess to restore it back to the state that it needs to be put back into. So, I don't know. I think what I mean is I do better with the big stuff than the small stuff is is all that meant. And again, it's that, that wavelength because if you're in narrow in fear, you got no choice. You can only do what that allows you to do. But if you're in the, in the love wavelength, and you know that the word has been so perverted over life we've been so misled with shit half half the people that that speak english don't even know the words they're using uh i think mary explained it best she said that they have a dictionary i think it was the she referred to they've got the black's law dictionary and we got the webster's dictionary and that was a good way to to put it unless i'm misquoting her but i think it was mary and what it means is they know the truth about what the words mean and the order they go in. And then they you go to public school and you get taught this second best watered down shitty version so that you'll grow up to be a good slave. Because as we all know, jet fuel melts steel and knocks 110 story skyscrapers to the ground and 10 seconds or less <clears throat> or mm. anyway it kind of pissed me off thinking about that for some reason but it you know if you're not living in that narrow little fucking fear mongering goddamn wavelength you can open your eyes to hear and your ears and, and see and hear other things than what the state tells you well it opens um uh, because at the beginning of 9-11, I didn't have an enemy in the in the game. I didn't care. I thought all you government pricks are all the fucking same. You all deserve each other. But I well, never cut it down to, well, this country's not as bad as that, as that one. I just said, uh, they all like Rob, they all suck. Well, then I got to Scotland, and it sucked, but not as bad. And then I got to Denmark, and it sucked. But hey, wait a minute. I got a little reach around here going on. This ain't so bad. It got a little better. <laughs> But the stories that you read and the information that you get about the places to go are almost always the opposite of whatever the reality is in the place that you are your destination. Because I, I heard what a shithole Texas was when I was in uh, growing up in California. All the kids at school, oh, you don't want to go to Texas, though. Uh, what did they say? They'll cut your hair off and leave you in an alley. All kinds, just horror stories and i went through texas and nothing i think once hitchhiking through katie near uh houston i had a beer bottle thrown at me once but eh, could have been could maybe it was maybe it was could have been my mind playing tricks with me because you know traffic <laughs> but the 80s were cruel and there were a lot of pricks out there on the road too you just uh had to have that knowledge of what what would you behave like if you were going to fuck somebody over and if that's what you thought that was like stay away from that fucker that's doing it it's very it's very simple 
But, of course, society has the deficit of movies and television to guide their their justifications of uh, how crime should be dealt with in, in a civil society. Here's the best part about it. What they don't really understand about crime like like physical violence most people that do physical violence know the victim and the victim knows the person that victimized them it's it's very very small portion of uh violence is happenstance and random and most of the shit that happens is organized by the very people that the state has convinced us are there to protect us. And they're there just picking people off like it's uh, some kind of sport. And then if the violence doesn't work, <laughs> they got asset forfeiture. And it goes back to the, the wavelengths. If you're existing in your life, your living comes off the misery of other people, how can you not really know that? I mean, how could that elude you as a, as a, a carbon-based life form with a brain? How can you not look at the other guy that's suffering at the response of what you did because he broke a code? <laughs> hey, he smoked a marijuana cigarette four hours ago and he forgot to dump the roach and you found it in his pocket. Well, that bastard needs to go to jail because he's in possession of something the state doesn't want him to have. Hmm. Now, see, if you go back to the to the roots of marijuana prohibition, you find out why and how they did this to us. They still lie about it, even telling the truth, because they're going to blame it on the church. What they what they said, they blame it on the Mormons. The Mormons had a big hand in making it. Uh, federal to get this marijuana plant under control because it made the Mexicans what super workers and then rape all the white women shit like this horror stories about crap that potheads don't even do super workers are you fucking kidding me after I smoke a bowl you know what I want to do nothing <laughs> I don't want to pick cotton I don't want to pick lettuce Fuck, sometimes I get so high I don't even want to pick my nose. But, I mean, you know, the way the, the way the system has indoctrinated the public with their bullshit stories, and they work so well. I remember when uh, Colorado had just legalized pot, and there was a fella on the RLM that was on there typing crap about crime had gone up 400% since... The state legalized marijuana. Well, here's the problem with that crap is at that point in your freaking history, 90% of your population in a prison situation, local, state, or federal, were all in there as a result of some form of marijuana prohibition law. Or what the cops really love to do is tack pot onto an existing charge. You have this, that, and the other. Eh, let's throw some pot charge on him. He had a joint. Now, to your average Joe that works for, five, you know, nine to five and all that crap, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, goes to church, has three kids and a wife, doesn't live that life, to him, that sounds horrible. Poor, well, yeah, this poor guy's, oh, I'm glad they got, and the thing he'll hold on to, I'm glad they got that pot smoker off the road. Because in the end of it all, that's all they got, you know. People are not the problem. The system is the fucking problem. Everything about the system is designed for the players to fail. Now, the top peer gets all the goodies, and then they take another, I don't know, 10% and they dribble it down to the lower people that got them to the top. And this behavior that we we endure it, I don't know, what do you call that? Um, participate in, endure, there's a lot of ways to look at it. But there's no way out of it unless you're willing to live on Bear Mountain and fight for rabbits to wipe your ass with. Yeah, get the, who, oops, did I say that out loud? See ya! 
good fucking riddance to you too, sir. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I have a little problem with a fellow on the RLM. Always have. And he makes me feel so much better when he goes away. Ah, got that out of my mind. But, see, I can't be angry and feel good at the same exact moment. I have to pick one. And just like everybody else, I got my weaknesses, you know? So, and then I get the nerve to get on the radio. Uh, let's see what Rob said. Nice. Thoughts I don't have to see. Eh, see, me and Rob, we agree. Eh, I appreciate your support on that because it's out of pocket to say anything on the radio. But, you know, my hardcore 12 know who he is. They and the people that are on the RLM. Jeez. <laughs> uh, you can't. You can't live in love and fear at the same time. So I guess if I buckle to this nuisance, I'm uh, I'm living in fear. You know, that's what anger is. Anger is fear. Well, there's so many ways to look at this. Is irritating somebody else... Hmm. That must be some form of fear. You know, they do something to the person listening that... Like, I irritate him enough to leave, but he just irritates me enough to use the ignore button. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. And and then, then it goes back to the wavelength, because then I can get back on the love train and spread the love chat to all the good folks on the RLM chat. But I don't usually do that. I usually just have a lot of horrible, terrible news to tell people about, or... Oh, bitching about some politician or king or queen or historical figure we were lied about, you know, we're lied to about. The everything that I ever fucking grew up believing was all misrepresented. You know, they had just enough of the truth in it to tell you the story so that when you talk to other people, you kind of sound like, well, you're not completely stupid, but. Once you did a little further digging, and the further you go back, the more horrid the the past looks. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't look any better than the present does? It's just that now we've got the internet to catch them and expose them, but the population doesn't have the wherewithal to do anything about anything. They just go along. There is, <laughs> I I go on bit shoot. I I really like bit shoot. And I go on bit shoot. There's a guy, guy. There's a couple that walks their dog, and I really get a giggle out of them. I don't know why. They just have a 20 minute morning chat about whatever's going on. It's fun to listen to them. And uh, there's this other guy. His name is Jerry. I don't know if he has last name, but he's on bit shoot, and he's <laughs> he has. Uh, I have, in my opinion, he is not encouraging anything. But he sees the public should be aware of certain ideas that he holds. And then he goes on to, to it, like Goober, without the violence. Where these he talked about chemtrails the other day. And me and Cirque, I was doing my puzzle and she was knitting. And I'm listening to this guy talk. And he's talking about posting on the internet the... Uh, the places that the chemtrail places planes take off and land at, post them and get people to, to protest and put a stop to it. And he's probably right. If it was peacefully done, and you know, but the government doesn't allow anybody to assemble that's a threat anymore. So I guess the Internet's the only way left. Hmm. And the Internet's going to... It's, got, it's a double-edged sword because the same people that give us the knowledge are the same people that tell us the lies. So it's always going to be a my side, your side thing. And I, I would blame it on the delivery of the information, the wavelengths, the, the brain waves. Thank you, Rob Works, for bringing that one to my attention. Because that might sound like I'm mocking you. And the truth is, I really think a lot of it, it's just such a bizarre concept but when you go to a football game or a baseball game there's 60,000 people chanting certain shit around you I you feel the fucking momentum there's something to it you know uh, churches anywhere where the, I avoid the large groups because I believe what this stuff is true <laughs> 
And the more idiots you gather in one place at one time, the more damage you can do to the rest of the herd. <laughs> so <laughs> what they try to do is they keep the leadership of the idiots in smaller groups, you know, so they can be <laughs> herded easier, <laughs> herded easier than the herd. You know, the, the herd's got legs and it, it's got the ability to say no, it just doesn't use it. And if it does use it, the media does not report the truth what happens, right? Now we've got the problem of the internet where you've got instant feed and all this other shit. But you got billionaires out there that can hire a thousand people to go protest on a street. So at this point in time in, in the history that we're in, what's real? <laughs> I think it's all bullshit. I see Rob Wright, and they all suck. So I would assume that at some level, me and Rob look at the the physical world and just know there's something wrong with the way they're telling us about it. it it's as though the stories that I was fed as a child were designed to prepare me for my adulthood so that I would behave in a certain way. And all along the freaking road, all I got was told, you're not doing it right. <laughs> and to this, day, to, to this day, the only place I find people that agree with me at, at any more than maybe, I don't know, 50%. Let's use numbers to explain this. Because I know people here in town that they like me to come around and they agree with my political stance. They believe with a lot of the shit, I think. But when it comes to the medicine, all of a sudden I'd cross the threshold. Now, I saw it physically with my own two eyes. But we all got, see, fear. And if you live in fear, you're not capable of expanding. You can't learn in fear. You're, that's what fear does is it... It shuts you down from the outside world getting in. You can only exist within it. But the love wavelength, it allows things to enter because it doesn't interfere with the flow. You can still move with it. Do a little look and if you don't, if you think I'm making this one up, because I've told some stories and I've told some truths over the years. And I guess if you, if you, depends on if you heard how the story started, you'd know whether I was making a giggle or if I was telling you a historical fact. But this one in particular, this is a personal experience with the cultivation of outside influence because I didn't think of it myself. But what I did do is, once I saw it, I started to think about it. And I I believe that that's what I do the radio show for, is, you know, there might be one guy or one girl out there that's going, oh, what the fuck is this kind of weird shit, the dork table, hmm, and might listen to it, might hear something that's, I don't know, hey, never thought of it like that. And if I can get one of those, it's that's pretty much my goal, not not to change anyone. But to open up, because my thinking has been, um, what would the right word be to explain it? Upgraded to be a computer geek for a minute. Because, you know, I was at Lou point one when I met Cirque. And now, five years later, I'm probably at Lou point two. You know, because I'm easier to get along with because I've in, uh, engaged in a little freedom, I think. And my version of freedom before I got to uh, this relationship was a lot different than uh, it is today. You know, when I got here, it was one I looked at things one way. In five years now, I look at, at life in a different way. But it still backs up to if I want to live in that little narrow fear thing, I can play with Hansel. If I want to be in the love wavelength, then I got Grimm and Rob Works and Moose Girl and Miss Kate. And... The, it's like one out of five is it, it, my number. Sometimes two out of ten. But let's go with one out of five to keep things simple. Is an obstacle in my way. And how do you deal with that? Some people, you can't love them. It's impossible to love them. Or is it? Hmm? 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 Because when I met Cirque, the thing that attracted me to her the most about the whole fucking uh, relationship thing 
was they actually liked her. Because when I met her, I thought, no, nobody's that nice. That's got to be. That's got to be a performance, you know, send me bullshit. In the... So I said so, and she said, you really think what you like. I went, wow, that's what I tell people. Fuck you, go judge somebody else. I got things to do. I ain't got time for this shit. So I used my own reasoning on my own attack, and we passed, crossed paths on another uh, day, and art came up, and that brought us to the love wavelength. Whoa, because we had something in common now. But... My first instinct was nobody is this nice. And this is how uh, Americanized I was, is one way to put it. You know, every fucking time you turn around, you're getting searched, traveling. And, you know, I'm looking at the negative side of it all. But the searches and the paperwork and the documents and the uh, the deaths in the family and dealing with all that shit for, you know, uh, family problems. Well, not problems, but, you know, well, yeah, your father dying, I guess, would be considered a family problem. But uh, it was unexpected, and I wasn't prepared for it. It just, boom, this is, what? <laughs> and everybody was in a panic, you know, about, wow, you come for a vacation, and this is what you get, you poor bastard. <laughs> and through it all, I lost the relationship I had when, it, when I, I had decided to help my mom. <laughs> And in in my own mind at that time, I thought, wow, fuck, life is just shitting all over me in one respect. But, you know, to leave your mom stranded in a on an island in a wheelchair is a pretty cold thing to do to somebody. So even I'm not that cold. So I, I stayed there and, and, you know, continued to keep her going. And she lasted up until last New Year's Day. So... She still made it four years after I moved on and, and met Cirque and, and started my own thing. But if I've learned anything over that, it's uh, I still think of my mom. and uh, But it's not, a, people dying is not always, not saying it's a good thing. It's just how I want to look at it will dictate my behavior to other people. So if I can be comfortable with, well, my mom was 74 and she passed on, that's easy. That's a nice, easy excuse for a person like me. So I'm going to go with that instead of being bitter and, oh, I got no mommy no more. And I got no, eh. I could do that too because I used to chitter chatter with her on the cell phone every couple weeks. And me and my mom have always been over the years, for the most part of life, pretty, pretty close. So she kind of understood my... Uh, my strange behavior to everybody else, she seemed to understand what the hell I was what the hell I was doing and, and why I might want to do it because in in ways I was like her. Uh, she was born in England and went to America at sixteen. So my little mommy was not a little rose. She you know, she but she was a good person and all that kind of stuff, honest and upright and all that kind of, but she had the balls to leave the country she was born and raised in to go somewhere else and try a new life. So growing up hearing that story, I think it made what I'm doing today kind of, uh, I don't know, run of the mill in the family I come out of. Um, there's nothing exceptional about me or any of the activities I've participated in traveling or work related, any of the crap I've gotten into. It's, uh, the artwork was kind of fun. I enjoyed that myself, but the family was not impressed. Um, they wanted more, you know, but they never got into the fear, the fear wavelength and, uh, shunned me. They just wait for me to come back and see what I've gotten into this time. And it that went on in, geez, until I was, what, in my, f I guess, uh, 30s. And I stopped visiting. And then at the end, in 2011, they talked me into going to England, or Scotland. They'd moved out, away from England a long time before that. But they talked me into coming back one more time. And if I hadn't have done just one thing that I did in that period of time, the whole thing that I'm doing today may not have, have ever happened. And and it does I in my mind it goes back to when I wrote that link about love and fear. That's what hooked circle. Because I, we got a lot closer after that and started to 
chitter chatter about you know I, I wonder what you to wonder if I should come there to meet you and me and Cirque talked about it but it took my friend uh, a little she had to intervene and, and make it clear because I was in La La Land you know in Scotland and she said why don't you just book a plane and go meet her you idiot and I went Huh? <laughs> one of those, you know, one of those Bullwinkle moments where we all have them about something. And it was just the most obvious thing in front of me. And I, I never seemed to think of that part. Even though I talked about it, it never really got my attention. So what I did was I got a, a round trip ticket and said, well, I hope this woman isn't a black guy named Steve playing me for a, you know, for a joke. Because anything on the Internet, anything could be possible. But me and Zerk had been constantly on Skype and, you know, the world truth and all this kind of stuff. And it actually, as it happens, everything happened the way we said it did and everything's good. But again, I think that is a result of being aware of the two, the two wavelengths and being able to at least not maybe control where I go into it, but be open to, you know, what would happen if I'm not an angry uh, grump or what if I'm, an, you know, open and nice. Let's see what happens with that. Because, uh, you know, being isolated in Kirkwall for a couple of years with my mom croaking was, uh, it was a little down and out. It was hard to, it was hard to enjoy watching your mom, you know, wither. So, you know, all that aside. But I think that overall, the decisions that I made were a result of being introduced to a lot of new information on the Internet. The Internet got me off the uh, high blood pressure con that I went through with the doctors. And I think I learned on a fluke from another opinion that, well, sure, if, if you go to see your doctor and the doctor says certain things to you, that's going to raise your blood pressure and they know that and that it doesn't have to be anything uh, specific for everyone one size don't fit all and how I'm going to explain this is this I used to like sitting in that fucking room for an hour waiting for this lazy ass doctor to get around to seeing me for the 10 minutes or whatever it was so I'd get my records and sit there and read them and he come in one day, you can't read your records. This guy, I have to have a this form. So I filled out the form. And then the next time I see him, he, you can't read your records. You said I needed to fill out the form. I filled out the form. Yeah, but you don't understand all this stuff, and you're going to misunderstand it. What the hell has that got to do with anything? Anyway, so I think that the behavior of the doctor raised my pressure because we clash so obviously and then he decided that sure look at your blood pressures up me must be uh having high blood pressure here and me with no knowledge of what any of this shit meant okay like a fucking idiot because i was feeling hey i don't feel good now of course now this pill and they got me and then the pills actually did was made me worse and when i got to kirkwall i found out that they wanted to give me a test for liver damage because it was a side effect of this fucking blood pressure pill. And I said, oh, okay. And I left and I went home and I threw everything in the garbage and I never called him back ever since. <laughs> and here I am, five years later, uh, every other day probably on an average, because it uh, depends. I don't do anything the same way twice. But every other day I, I got a good two-mile walk. And uh, go down to the local store and get me some stuff and throw it in my backpack. And I lug it home. Because I don't want to drive a car. Nor do I want to haul around a bicycle. So I figure it like this. And then I've never met anybody that shared this opinion. But when I'm walking, I have the freedom to stop and not walk. Now if I'm riding a bike... Stopping and not riding is a little bit more of an inconvenience. It takes longer. You could <laughs> depends on what what your reason for stopping is. You might pass what you want to stop for. But walking, ah, 
and I can move out of people's way when they're pushing strollers or maybe the guy's got two bags, one in each arm, and the walkway is not all that big. We're in Denmark. It doesn't take anything for me to step around somebody when they're, you know, trying to haul their fucking groceries home. <laughs> Or to let the bike or the car go ahead of me because, <coughs> excuse me, in my mind, <coughs> these other people are burdened with these machines. And, you know, they have to maintain them and ride them and gas them and oil them and water them and paint them and all this other shit. And all I got to do is walk easy as pie. And it, it might seem like, oh, but look at how much longer it takes to do it if you walk. And I've had nights where I can walk to the store in 15 minutes, shop in 10, and walk home in about another 15, maybe 17, up and back. So 35, 45 minutes. And in, if you enjoy what you're doing... <clears throat> Time doesn't really matter. You know, it's almost sometimes it's like if it wasn't for the cold of the winter, because I'm a little sissy when it comes to the cold, but it gets down about 30 and there's a wind out there. I piss and moan a little bit, but the walk is always, uh, hmm, it's something I enjoy. I've been lucky with that. Instead of walking being a punishment or an inconvenience, uh, I've known a lot of people in my life that had wheelchairs to get around in. So the ability to walk was always put at the top, you know, like, wow, man, I thought for myself, crying out loud, if I ever had to come down with whatever you have and be in a wheelchair, I don't know if I could live like that. So being able to walk is one of the highlights of my damn life. And it's probably coincidental, you know, because mom, mom had a wheelchair. Um, some of my closer friends in life, not all of them, not like a lot of them, but the times that it happened, it was somebody that I was fond of and thought, wow, but you're stuck in this, with this fucking disease that's crippling that you, your legs and you can't walk. <clears throat> now, hmm. it sounds, maybe to some people it doesn't sound like much of a goal either, but I would attribute it to taking care of my health as a result of the internet. Yeah, so I knew fuck all about. I lived with uh, paramedics, so at the t you know the last ten years before I I went to Scotland, my uh, my knowledge had been guided to that medical thing. And I thought that that's that I believed it until uh, the blood pressure thing, because on, the only time I needed it was when I had a, a hernia problem. Uh, I wonder we going to get into that on the, on the radio at the point. The point I'm trying to make is I was once saved by a surgeon because I had friends that knew him. And if it hadn't been for the middleman friend, I would have never gotten to see the surgeon. I would have never got the surgery and probably would have had my, uh, what you call them, the hernias would have erupted and killed me. <clears throat> it was that serious, blah, blah, blah. It took uh, six weeks apart, I had to have two different surgeries to sew up four hernias. And in my whole life, I'd never been, uh, what do they call that, diagnosed. Okay, i just gotten out of this freaking uh, doctor for uh, whatever, for years. You know, I've been to the doctor, this happened, that happened. They check you, they inspect you, or you get a job and they want you to see a doctor, make sure you don't have any, you know, existing disease, whatever the fuck it was. And never once did anybody ever diagnose me with hernias. And when I was 44, I had four of them try to go off all at one time. <laughs> it was, it, and see, it's that, it's that wavelength thing because I'd brought in the, I brought in, oh, you fucking bay. I had gotten into a place in life where the people I was involved with were the necessary people to meet the people that were going to eventually save my life. <laughs> Looking back on it, it makes sense now, but when I was going through it, it didn't seem anything more than just another day. But now I look back and I see the all the steps that I'd taken 
that had actually put me in this position with this person to meet that person to get this happening but the uh, illness that led up to it was uh, I don't know it was just strange that I had been instructed because nobody wanted the responsibility of what was wrong with me so they sent me to different doctors to get different results you know to uh, get what they call it a second opinion crap but they sent me to three total and out of the three, the only one that had the right diagnosis was the original guy. The other two had other ideas. So it was just enough to stir up the pot to put a, a slowdown on my paperwork. And the paramedics went right to the surgeon and said, you got to talk to this guy. I talked to him on a Tuesday, and he was operating on me on Friday. <laughs> so I was in some serious freaking shape. And the uh, medical profession could not agree on anything. It it was just such a clusterfuck. I don't even know if I've explained it in a, in a fashion that makes sense to anybody else at this point. I have to listen back to this one because uh, I've never really spoken much about it. But as a result of the medical profession, I have both survived and then after that been fucked off by the very same people and I don't I don't understand how one one thing went so well and I got saved and then after I get saved then they want to put me back in some uh, blood pressure medicine medicine program or whatever that was because in my mind to this day it was nothing more than the doctor taking advantage of me having a condition on the day and then him going, well, we have a pill for this. So he was selling me something. It was like, yeah, I've sold enough shit to realize the, the setup, <coughs> you know, the features and benefits, the clothes. <laughs> and he, he did it all by himself and he did it real quickly. It wasn't an overkill kind of thing, but he did play off my ignorance of what blood pressure is and is not. And let's go back to the wavelengths, you know. If uh, if I'm living in that love wavelength, then I can accept the truth or deny the truth or learn something. But if I'm living in that fear, I'm only going to be available to one thing because there's no room in there for a lot of ideas. You can't think. You can't do anything except one thing. That's fear. To me, that's how I look at it. Maybe other people might believe they've got choices in their fear. I, I'm not so much going to go that way. I think um, being in fear is the whole thing. It limits you to a negative. Whatever that is, it's not good for you. No good will come of it, but it's how we're taught to cope with it. All right. Well, Cirque's got this other idea about it, I suppose. Um mm. Grimner has another idea about it, I suppose. Moose, Frumpy, oh, who else is hanging around? Rob Works. You know, we all got the way we look at stuff, and then we got this joint illusion where we all try to top each other with, I know the answer to this, and I know the answer, and look at this link, and look at, the, look at what I know. And I'm going to go along with my original thought, which is, I've got a shitload of opinions about stuff, but I don't really believe that when it comes to outside, external, I don't know shit about life except myself. <laughs> the rest of you, no, I know what you tell me. You know, I know what I read. I can see your interests by the stuff you post or don't post, but uh, hmm, I don't know. I don't really think that defines any one person, your interests or your likes or your dislikes. I believe it's your behavior. And that, that again, it's all subjective. One guy's, you know, one guy's asshole is another guy's savior. Let's, let's be blunt and put it in a nasty way like that. You know, and I'm going to go on to something else so I don't drive everybody completely insane try to get another topic happening but give some consideration to if you got interested in this topic at all there's many many uh, pieces of information that that are available out there that you can type in something in your browser and start looking and see what you find 
You know, and it's no more uh, confusing than implied consent. It's very simple, very basic, and either you get it and you agree with it, or you don't. It's a it's up to the person looking on. And but there we go with brain waves, and I think that the more people that are on the same wavelength about the love or the fear controls things, and we're living in fear. So, and that's going to take us to I've got my awareness level six protein capsules on sale for just nine ninety five a pill. <laughs> Don't be the last kid on your block to trip down the road. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't sell pills. I was making fun of Alex Jones. But now that we've gotten that off my mind, let's go to something just a little bit, well, it's still a little bit different. But I was playing with my little note paper the other day, and I was looking for topics in my mind. In my mind, I saw synthetics. And, and, Last week, I was giving, uh, giving Vinny some grief about his religious perspective, and his, God, his God outlook. And as I'm writing, I write S-I-N-T-H-E-T-I-C-S instead of S-Y. And I thought, wow, isn't that a coincidence that the, the beginning of that word is sin? I wonder if, I never pursued this, but I, I wonder if thetics means anything. <laughs> Maybe right in front of us, you know, because they do this with words all the time. Synthetics. Because it sounds bad when you say it slow. You go, wow, I don't want to do that. But <laughs> every fucking thing that's synthetic is uh, second-rate garbage. And how... How do you prove that? Well, let us ponder. What name something that's made out of synthetic? Hmm. Hey, let's use rayon as an example, right? Now, what purpose would rayon have had if they hadn't used it to make cheap Hawaiian shirts in the 60s and 70s? What would they used rayon to make? Okay, let's ponder something else. Because they had cotton, but the problem with cotton, I don't this is not very well known. <clears throat> I had a friend in the nineties that had experience working on cleaning the uh, exhaust systems of cotton mills. And he would mention it to me and chitter chatter on and I never really got more out of the conversation than Cotton is a filthy mess to process to make clothes out of. It creates more waste and destruction than it than it uh, does anything else. It's really negative. But the product is 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 natural. But the process to get to the product is so destructive and filthy. It's not worth the work it takes to get cotton. Now. What I didn't know at the time in the 90s was two fucking things about hemp. Hemp was buried, buried, ignored, forgotten, illegal, all the negative that you can imagine. Hemp. Oh, no, no, no. That's the cousin of marijuana. Well, yeah, what's that got to do with hemp? All the fucking thousands of applications that you can use with hemp anything you can make i where do you begin henry ford made a car that was not only manufactured with hemp but it was running on hemp had a hemp design engine 1943 so they could have made a car in 1943 that would have last a hundred years but guess what happens when you do that I believe they say your GDP drops like a hooker at a Rolling Stones concert. But I could be wrong. But I'm probably not. Because uh, people that depend on uh, the sheep for a source of income so they don't themselves have to work. Oh, what do you do for a living? I own a chain of restaurants. You know, well, what do you do? I own a chain of restaurants. 
Yeah. Okay, and where's the work part come in? Oh, you know, and then people make a big deal of having to decide who to this and who to that when if that's your idea of work, hmm. Obviously, you've never met Mr. Cotton Bowl. <laughs> Neither have I. I was lucky in that. Uh, any fruit picking I ever did was for pleasure. My Mexican side would fight with my Jewish side, and I would say, No, I am not picking the fruit, my friend. It ain't going to happen. But, okay, anyway, so I'm screwing around about that for a minute. But thinking about synthetics where wow it's such a i don't know such a vast i don't know where to begin with it. henry ford was kind of good because everybody knows who henry ford was um but the oil thing that goes back to we played trivia one day a couple of weeks ago and the question was about who was the vice president in like 1890 something and I knew it was Roosevelt. I knew he was the vice president because the vice president that was in the seat was assassinated or taken out or whatever it was. He was removed. And guess who sat in his seat? Rockefeller. And at that period of time, just about 1900s, there is this glut in the economy. All kinds of oil. Oil, 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 oil. So all these big tycoons got oil well, what are we going to do with it because at that point in history it was useless they had nothing to make into from their source of oil so then they created gasoline well when they did that then they had to take henry ford's original and from the beginning beyond the 1943 back in the beginning i read his original engine actually ran on hemp hemp was a more available fuel but the other guys had a better idea because they had all this useless, fucking wasteful shit oil. They didn't know what to do with it. And they came up with this car thing to get rid of it. And from the car, all the Edisons and all these other crooks, they followed afterward and they found more shitty ways to enslave us through synthetics. Because, fuck, if you use hemp, my God, it doesn't make waste, it doesn't pollute it doesn't do any freaking harm no matter what your application. And you can eat hemp. You can make products out of hemp. You could do any anything that we do right now that we manufacture can be replaced with hemp. And people, oh, how are you going to grow enough of that? Wow, those, some people have no concept of how big they claim the planet is. 25,000 miles is a long distance to go around something. So you think about that for a minute. And then ask again, where's all the fucking product going to come from? It, I seen a link of a man that's got a, a underground garden where they mass grow. I mean, it's like a farm underground. And they grow from the heat of the earth. He's just brilliant. Figured out how to grow food underneath the ground in the snow in nebraska in the winter time and they do this year round so they've got a, a regular yield they know how to move their plants around which plants to let rest between they're going to get this much yield out of that many plants it's very scientific and very well thought out and very well done and the stuff is done without monsanto you know uh they didn't get us all. They got a lot of people, these Monsanto pricks. And they're like Mary talks about, because she's a farmer. She grows food. She knows what this is about. She knows the damage Monsanto's done to the farmer over the last, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years, whatever it's been. And now Monsanto dumped everything, and now they're bare so they can hide. So because they got a public, they'll just ignore it for 10 years. And in 10 years, nobody will even know what Monsanto was, except for the, the nerds and the dorks on the Internet will know. And the rest of the public will just go to Starbucks and drink coffee. Now, that's an acceptable way to live, you know, in this synthetic world that we're living in. Yeah, synthetics, man. What TV? Good God. If 
TV is anything but factual. And I'm not just talking about your mainstream ABC, NBC. I mean this cable TV fantasy farce bullshit. I've read more crap about, what's that, Game of Fucking Thrones. I I didn't enjoy it. I'm not about the medieval days. and I don't want to ride dragons and, you know, save whatever from towers. <laughs> what is it? Save damsels in distress and fight dragons and all. Fuck that shit, man. I want to work on my jigsaw puzzle, play on the internet, chitter-chatter on the radio a little bit, you know, have dinner with my wife, and uh, just peaceful and quiet. But I came from a world that was chaotic and disorganized and never a dull moment. <laughs> so I've had the best of both worlds and... Uh, I don't know. People got to do whatever it is they got to do. But if you're living in the synthetic, broken, every 30 minutes, I need a new one life. I didn't start out there. So it's hard. It's harder to be an old guy in and accept the modern world than it is to be a young guy in the modern world. I, when I was young, I accepted a lot better than I do now. Of course, when I was young, I didn't know any of this shit. Because all these things were hidden from us. Now, speaking of synthetic, I told a story the other night on Christmas about my friend Steve Matthews in San Francisco. When I left out that night, Steve Matthews is the guy that opened up the doorway for me to find out who Tesla was. I had no idea. Never even heard of him. And Steve Matthews was uh, the town drunk, you know, guy that was just always out of his mind and except when he was working so when we were working together he had all these brilliant things to talk about and when he was trying to party he was uh, just unbearable anyway one of them was the tesla story i saw a videotape in 1987 and i've never been able to google it and find a copy of it it's called nikola tesla man out of time I know I watched it. I must have watched this thing 10 or 20 times, me and Steve and me by myself, to, you know, together and separately. But I can't find it. And what, But what it was about was the life and times of Tesla, how he got here, what happened, how Edison buried him, uh, his, his dislike for physical touch, uh, his weird habits with his food. What it left out was the ending where... Trump's uncle got a hold of the papers that he died with. So all these years, the free energy has been hidden from us by the government. And, it, and they go through this, um, this parade, masquerade, theater about free energy. Boy, they fucked us all good with this free energy because if you understand what Tesla did in simple layman's fucking terms it comes down to this he found a way to extract electricity from the atmosphere and he wanted to give it to mankind here you go my friends here electricity have your electricity so apparently in some form of the physical electric world electricity just keeps generous energy it's always there. It's a never-ending supply. It would take millions of years to use what's available to us. But synthetics, oil, these morons, I say this all the time, here we are, 2018, almost 2019, and still fighting over fucking thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 debt cars for the, for the uh, permission to burn oil in a debt mobile and feel that you're somebody. You know, because I started out, if you had a driver's license and 30 bucks, you could find a car. They were cheap and plentiful. Gas was nothing, 30 cents a gallon, something like that. Well, I was about 14, 15 when I was started to do this. So I, I might. I might be a little ahead of even people my own age because when Nixon took over that uh, oil crap, the OPEC thing came together and gas doubled overnight. It was like, what, 1974, right in there. 
Yeah, well, I was still, maybe was it 74? I might be off. Might have came later. It might have been 78 I'm thinking about. But gas in 74, if I remember, I might be a little off, but it was like 33 cents a gallon. So, and a buck was a buck. It went a long way back in the day. You could get gas and cigarettes and still have change from your dollar. <laughs> And, and be able to drive, you know, give you a quarter tank of gas and uh, get you a damn pack of cigarettes and still have change. But now, Christ, tell us people you got a dollar and they'll feel sorry for you and try to give you some help. But see, the op, this society, the obsolescence, uh, break it by another one, society wouldn't even exist. But these fucking bankers thought way ahead and they went, you know what? I bet if we con them into thinking hemp is bad, they will make a law that says it can't be used. And we can use all this secondary shit that we couldn't sell to an Eskimo on a nice warm day. I don't know what the hell that meant, but well, all I'm saying is they couldn't give this fucking shit away to people, so they made it necessary to be used by illegalizing the only thing that actually worked. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful game. And the further on down the American row you ho go, <coughs> or at least for me, the more in depth I looked at it, the more, wow, this isn't what they told me. I found it to be. Every fucking thing that I knew was based on some form of nonsense or imaginary, well, what would you call it, creative writing. It was like the accounting. If I would have known when I was a child that the Federal Reserve Bank created money out of thin air and it had no value, I would have went, wait a minute, what? I would have questioned it. But see, that's not that's not what we were raised with. Those things... They never even talked about that shit in school. Economy, gold, money, uh, checking, savings, the things that you need to know when you're 18 and you need to get a place of your own if you're that old when you do it. Most people have no idea what they're doing. Just, well, at the time. Now, uh, it's not so easy to leave home. Wow, when I was doing it, when I was a teenager, well, a renting an apartment, I don't know, 150 bucks a month maybe in LA. I can't remember what it was. Somewhere like that, 150, 200 dollars a month. It wasn't all that much. Utilities, nah, they were cheaper, way, way, way cheaper then. So I probably ran a, an apartment, less food on 250 a month. But I had a, <laughs> I had a good source of income through the Ford Motor Company and this. Uh, I sold tools and petroleum hose equipment and couplings it was a brilliant and telephone sales had just broken out on the market and see i have my deep rooted to test for petroleum because i at one point depended on it for an income and as i got older learning the truth about all these things really angered me i think you know that fear back to the fear mode and uh the anger comes out and shit, everything after it is, this shit's bad for you. After I made all that money selling the, the components that were needed to transport and pump the gas, years later I realized, wow, what a, that's not good. What was I doing? But that's what fell in my way at the time. So every step that I've taken has taught me a lesson. You know, well... I made money off it, but no, I don't want to do that anymore. So in my mind, I've at least progressed to the next level of my development. Because my development and your development, whoever you may be out there in radio land, <laughs> they're not going to be identical. Sometimes they're not even similar. You do, the only comparison there is is we wake up and we live, and then one day we don't wake up anymore. And that's the end of whatever that is. And then all these other people, these synthetics in my life, have gotten in my face with their their version of what what's beyond and 
What happens after you're gone? What the fuck? I'm still trying to figure out why there's fluoride in the fucking drinking water when I'm growing up. And this idiot wants to tell me about the afterlife I haven't got to yet. So, in my mind, all the good things in life are manipulated to get my mind off where I'm at and take me where I'm never going to (laughs) be. (laughs) <laughs> because it, you're easier to control if you don't question the guy telling you what to do. You know, when the guy says something, you're supposed to be a good little slave and just do what he says. He's the boss. He's in authority. He has a badge. He has a gun. Or her. Whatever for all you sexist people out there that feel left out. But not the Magtail guys. Fuck you guys. Man, a world without women would be a, like a Day without oxygen. I've spoken. Anyway, that was just a short, short rant for no particular reason. (laughs) Synthetics. Synthetics made me do it because I believe. Now, here's another thing I believe is that if I was fueled and the wavelengths were delivered on the proper uh, natural uh, vibration that's the best word uh, th- these are things i've learned from rob works and larry woods and that the fuel system is is designed to handle just about any fucking mixture you can throw at it but like a machine it might run but it won't run at its most optimum capability because you're, you're using shitty fuel but you can still you can you know tweak it and nigger rig it and juice it and do all kinds of shit and you can keep your your engine running now it may not last as long as it would if you fed it a proper good source of fuel so if you got an engine mind i guess you know what i'm talking about now i'm not a mechanic or any of that horse shit but i know this if you put water in a gas tank somebody's car ain't gonna run right So I look at me and I think, wow, okay, so if I put crap into my system, well, there you go. My source of energy is going to yield a second best result than if I was fueled with something that was uh, good for production, you know, that was in my best uh, interest. But I live on synthetics and have since I was a child. I've grown up on synthetics. I've learned how to survive physically on food that if you probably fed it to somebody that lives in a jungle in like Brazil, it'd probably kill them. <laughs> they, it would be such a shock to their freaking system. They couldn't handle whatever the crap is that we've been designed to, to eat as fuel that only works at, it's like works at a mere percentage of what fuel should work at which is your first indication that there's trouble oh grimner and them are worried about a, this is a blizzard report on the rlm i don't know i guess uh mm, oh it's a blizzard warning for grimner <laughs> Uh, somebody says, I've lived in Albuquerque for 14 years. I do believe this is my first blizzard warning. Still, wow. I hope it doesn't come out here and bother me. (laughs) Keep your fucking blizzard to yourself there, Albuquerque. (laughs) Anyway. So, yeah. No, I've used this before on on the radio and, and spoke of it. But I don't see... Any major changes coming from um, <laughs> the world, you know, because the world wants to make a profit. And the world not only wants to make a profit, but they want their profits to never end growth. They want never ending growth from profit. Not, you know, hey, we'll take a little bit and you guys get this and we'll make a few. No, these fucking people, what they've done to us is the product is worth 4% of the cost of the product because the dollar value is fucking nothing. What is it like? I don't know. For 2 to 4% of your dollar doesn't go to paying taxes? (laughs) I don't know. 
And my dollar, your dollar, everybody's dollar. If we're in this game, the society game, we're getting hammered. And we're not only getting hammered, but, geez, the crap they sell is, wow. It's really mean. I, I'm disappointed. And I mean it in the sense of synthetics. And I'm not blaming people because they're ignorant. I'm blaming them because there's enough knowledge now. Like somebody said something about, um, I'm not all about the smoking uh, cannabis bit, but I really have an interest in all the things that hemp can make if we used hemp. And I agree with that because smoking dope ain't for everybody. Some people don't want to. And the ones that do, some people go a little too far with their pot stories. Nothing fucking exciting happens when I'm stoned. I'm so jealous. I, I'm just the same. The same boring old guy stoned is the same boring old guy when I wake up in the morning. No different. There's no great change in me. But I do like the physical comfort of the marijuana ingestion. <laughs> marijuana. <laughs> I don't know what to call it anymore. So I just do a little bit. It For those of you that don't or can't or won't, because I don't really care what you do. I only care what you do when what you do affects the world and what we individually do. I don't really think it's got much effect on the world as a world, but it has an effect on the people that you encounter, you know. Like, God, Grimner spent some uh, time with me, teaching me some things today. And I'm not easily, uh, I'm not a good student, but I did go out of my way to, to work it. and I practiced, and I went in there, and I did a run and see if I could actually, if I actually did this right. And it was kind of fun. I, I, I did learn something new about the computer. Uh, I got notes. Once I do a, a thing three or four times, it's uh, then it goes to memory you know then my memory kicks in and it picks it up and i can almost autopilot through these little tasks it's that just that fear see the fear wavelength of something new and i'm nervous and intimidated and all this whatever the internet does to me it's yuck. it's very yuck it's not very inviting it's very imposing and like, you, you need to know a lot of shit. And it's really just a matter of knowing which door to go through to get to the next door. So once I started to realize that, then I found a way to link the, the steps with the, the way that I look at something. And I found a comfortable way to do what Grimner had instructed me to do. I just had to write it down, write down the steps in a certain way, and then look at the screen with a another way and... Between the two of us, I found something that worked. And the ability to listen to the other guy is... Whoosh, boy, when you're this age, it, it's a miracle that I can learn how to do anything new. Because learning in the long run has always been such a disappointment. And then the, th the things that I've learned through the internet, although they're good, it brings up all that 50 fucking years of being bullshitted about the very same things that are true are the opposite you know i was told this and it turned out to be that whatever that was because i would just go with rob and they all suck and i've tried you know my own version of it and it's all bullshit <clears throat> but the negative see there we go back to the the wavelengths and that i started out the show about the first place the love and the fear you can't be negative and positive at the same exact moment. You can switch back and forth like a light switch. And some of us are quick and some of us like to enjoy, you know, enjoy the, the moment that we're in and just go with that. Some people are hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Me, I like to enjoy and endure and last and all that kind of thing. Uh, I have a hmm, very short temper for certain things and a very long temper for other things mm. oh yeah thank you grim but you know it's just a matter of taking this radio thing seriously because i gave up way back in the beginning when i started with Vinny. i didn't ever want 
the responsibility of people depending on me for fucking knowing anything. I just wanted to get on the radio and see if it was worth doing, and I like it. It's enjoyable. And when I do listen back, uh, not half as bad after the fact. Going through this, in my mind's eye, I'm rambling and jumping from one topic to the other, and I don't finish a sentence. And then I listen back and think, well... I spoke my mind the best I could, and hopefully, if nothing else, there's somebody out there that goes, eh, I know what you're talking about. And that's my goal, not not that fame and fortune crap. I just like to be a, a, a part of something where usually I've been isolated and wanted to stay away from people. The radio seems to make me feel like, well, this is my opportunity to tell them what I think. And then I can even get on the dork table or get on in a perfect world and bring other people on to debate or challenge or argue about or talk about the weather or whatever the hell my mood brings me and there's people to play with. And sometimes there aren't. Sometimes I get on the... uh, Because I started one with Mary and I started one with Vince. And Mary and Vince have their own problems and their own things go on so they... They decided radio, they didn't have time for it to be committed to it, to be there every time. So sometimes I do them a solo. But I don't feel, I feel that those two projects are separate from what I'm doing tonight. I'm trying to do this tonight, consciously aware of the love, fear, uh, emotion situation that I believe is true. I don't know how to, trying to sum that up quickly probably didn't work. But two choices to me that are as real as this are something I couldn't pass up. This isn't Republican and Democrat. This isn't just opposite sides of the same fucking thing. This is two separate individual choices that I can make with my own mind at any time I want to. I can choose to be in in love or I can choose to be in fear at any given moment, I just can't do them both at the same time. And that's my experience. That's what I found out about it. Like, uh, oh, me and Cirque decided way back in the beginning, if we're going to have an argument, you know, and it really is going to go somewhere, if you sit and hold somebody's hand while they're mad at you, <laughs> do, you do you know that it doesn't last very long to be mad? <laughs> I mean, it. But to be in control of your emotions that strongly that you can be in a disagreement with somebody, but remember that you love them more than you want to be right at that moment, eh, you can calm down and nothing serious will ever come through. Except for, oh, see, you raised, I raised my voice, so I'm sorry. There you go. But, hey, I've been in uh, situations with people, male and female, where they wanted to kick the shit out of me because I had an opinion. <laughs> it, I don't. Hmm. It wasn't uncommon for people to get angry, but it was very rare that anybody followed through with it. I could always, you know, sit down and reason with you if you wanted to give it a chance. I survived Steve Matthews, and he hit everybody else. So, hmm. which may take us back to you know, um, Vinny's thing about the god you know i don't know i can't be sure of things i can't prove and like i said tuesday i believe that proof to me is i like the answer (laughs) simple simple as that oh but it makes so much sense oh i don't care if it makes sense or not i like the idea of using hemp the concept of hemp makes me feel good thinking about it talking about it wow you go wow i wonder if anybody that didn't know this just heard it because there's things i don't know lots of millions and zillions of things right today it was uh learning how to navigate through this program so that i could change the name of the program from show to show so i could do this and not stick grim doing it which is fair because i'm the one that wanted to do it so i'm taking the initiative and I think with a little practice, like you said there, Grim, shit, this won't, it'll be just as, uh, be like lighting a smoke. I mean, I'm already doing the 
the one thing I got that uh, click 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 there's no thinking to it it's autopilot but you know, I have to slow down a little bit and remember to change the date but they did here's the other thing is that the year month day thing that that was brilliant I wish I would have thought of it but then again I grew up using inches and feet and yards and I live in meter land so but it's so easy to use a decimal system I don't I don't see what the big problem is in a <coughs> when when I do inches and, and feet sir get, just goes all giddy about it because it's such a difficult way to measure compared to meters and centimeters and <laughs> the metric system is 10 and the system I grew up on that changes from one thing to the other because probably because of synthetics we had ounces we had pints we had feet we had inches all these different this is divided by 16 this is divided by 12 then you got this other whole fucking system that's divided by 10 but no we're not going to use that europe europe uses that fucking stupid europe <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't want to know that shit so what happened to me is i i just i got the ability to use both so like centigrade and uh fahrenheit there's a formula to it all you, above zero it's uh, just so simple if the temperature is one degree cent is that centigrade right cent or whatever it's called c cap i might even call it it wrong but anyway one degree in c is Double it and add 30. It's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But Celsius, right? Why is that the right name for it? Uh, I know what it is. I just, I'm having a brain fart right now. <laughs> but the, everything in life that we do has a formula to it, no matter what you think. It's, some of us don't have the ability to recognize it. Uh... Let's see. I don't know if Grimm's talking to me. Let's see. I think so. Uh, uh, yeah, they didn't use to freak out about it so much. Uh, no storm surges here. He's talking about the storm. Then he talked about my thing. Then I couldn't change your stuff if I wanted to. Not until after. I don't know what that's about either. I might have... Uh, I might be reading out of my league. <laughs> reading the chitter-chatter while I'm talking on the radio. I've lost my freaking mind for sure this time. <clears throat> but I did think synthetics was a, a good topic. I just don't really know how to express this particular, because everything is so, it's all fake. Maybe that's what I'm getting at, you know. And not the uh, the electricity isn't real. It's very real. It's that the 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 speed that it's delivered on. And this, how do you explain that? Rob Works has got this this part of the uh, electrical experience physically, so it's easier for him to tell. But he told me it's Hertz, H Z. Now I got the name right, but to apply these things to my daily life is uh, at the moment beyond my my scope but they're things i'm striving for i figure if i learn a little at a time as i go can't get any worse <laughs> and my goal would be to get away from the synthetics but my reality dictates never going to happen boy i'd sure love to but have to be living on a mountaintop all alone with you know fighting bears for rabbit fur and i'm not ready to <laughs> i don't no and i i don't think sir could let go anyway so i could go live on mount poop oh speaking of synthetics does do any of you remember this uh cartoon robin williams and who else was in that uh, the guy out of the rocky horror picture show the one that played uh, Frankenfurter. Tim Curry. Uh, a lot of big names from the 70s. It was called... Uh, uh, oh, crap. Now I lost the name of it. Uh, it was a cartoon. Oh, jeez. Fern Gully. Ooh, 
Boy, talk about brain farts. When you have them there, they just suck. Anyway, yeah, Fern Gully, and they had little songs in it. and It was about the rainforest and how bad um, oil is. Back in the 70s, or it might have been the early 80s, because uh, I had a, a daughter, my own kid, and uh, her siblings loved that, so they got her hooked on it. And then, of course, you know, whatever the, the daughter wanted to watch, either you let them or you didn't. And if you did, you end up watching it with them because you don't just leave a child alone in a room. You got to, you know, watch them. That's what watching them means. <laughs> so, oh, man. So some days I'd in, be in there watching Fern Gully with her. And I realize, you know, the the warnings have been with us all along. But they've been put in form of entertainment, so people don't know if it's real or not. So they think they're just being entertained while they're being warned about. Yeah, the 50 to 60 cycle went, yeah, that cycle thing, you got me. Yeah, it goes to Hertz. That's exactly, Rob. But if that existed and we were privy to use these things, it would improve the quality of the individual's life to some level. And that's, and yeah, that's what I'm going with. I trust Larry. I think Larry's theories put to work. How could it hurt? Things um, aren't bad. They're just not as good as they could be because synthetics just don't do it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did define it. I appreciate that because when I talk, I I jibber jabber and stammer over words, and I'm stoned, and I lose you know, I lose a word here and there, or a thought escapes me, and it's not my strong suit. It's what my strong suit is is that the doorway to the answer is in these energy things and it's not this free energy crap these morons are talking about so they can make make money off an alternative i'm talking about there is a real free source of fucking energy on this planet we can get it we have the technology but these other motherfuckers have got it all tied up so that if we don't buy from them we don't get and that's all backed up with law, law enforcement, state, local, federal authority. All these bullshit enterprises to skin us work, you know. And the people, that, the people, we the people in all these fucking countries, they will not look at the damage done by the government and abolish it and say, no, we need something different. Nothing would be an improvement over what we have. Oh, but the if this stopped and that stopped, <clears throat> and I think if people were forced to be independent of the big government, they would be. And that will save you. Because the way things appear, I mean, on paper, so to speak, you know, uh, visually, emotionally, mentally, uh, what you hear and what you see, it all looks very bad. Always crap about war and this fucking country and that fucking country. And if you're my age and you haven't grown up beyond this stupidity of what fucking reason is there that these idiots are bombing each other? Well, it's a bunch of crap. That's what the reason is because, as I have said, this is my opinion, I will die with this opinion. Nose to nose, person to person, man to man, man to woman, woman to man, however you slice that cake, one on one, people seem to get along. Okay? And the bigger the number of people, the more problems that you bring in. So all this diversity and culturalism and shit that these governments have fucking thrown at us. It's all part of a plan to, to destroy this thing from the inside out. And <laughs> Rob's going on with the defining. <laughs> That's all right, Rob. You 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 can have typos on the reallibertymedia.com chat if you like. <laughs> I just get uh, I get comfort in your knowledge of that area because if I really do need it, I go to you. So I have always got that comfort, you know, when I can talk about these things and you know, when I screw up, you correct me until I get it right. But until I need the, the knowledge, 
I haven't stretched out to get it. I'm working up to that point. I'm acquiring the, you know, the tools necessary to make an approach. And I figure it's going to take me all winter before I get off my physical ass and, and do anything. But I'm going to spend the winter planning and scheming and acquiring information like I did about the blood pressure medicine. <laughs> Experience is the greatest fucking teacher in the world. But if you've got somebody in your life that you trust a lot, go talk to them about this crazy stuff I bring up on the radio. Well, try it with a peer and talk to them and see what kind of response you get out of that person. Do a little research on what these things truly are. And you'll find out what I, if you find out what I found out, which may or may not happen, but what I found out is we get manipulated into believing stories that are just absolutely not true, but they're made true due to your lack of information. And they call that the medical system. That's why they say they're practicing medicine. So there's no responsibility on their end for any shit they do to you. And I got to a point where I just said, that's not good enough. I'd rather be rather croak and be pushed in a fucking hole than ever go back and see one of those freaking uh, snake oil salesmen again. That man knew exactly what he was doing to me. And he did it for what a paycheck he wasn't helping me i thought he took a hippocratic oath you know to do no harm and and everything that was a product of his work was causing me harm either emotionally because i was afraid because i knew something was fucking wrong and that's what fear is your body and your head are getting together going hey stupid don't do this it's bad for you and you act out in negative ways and people think you're crazy the minute you tell the Thorita you don't want to do that, they, they panic. They, they see you slipping. Oh, we can't control this one. What are we going to do? He's going to scare off all the sheep. They're going to run everywhere. So at that point, they need a shepherd to get you back in line. And like Rob Works and Grimner, I'm Beetle and, you know, the other diehard fuckers out there. I'm not coming back to the herd. I don't give a shit what you promise me. I don't care what you threaten me with. I don't care if you lock me up. No, fuck it. I am not returning to the herd. That herd days are over. If they ever existed at all. Because kind of always. <laughs> I've always gone against the grain as a rule. But you know, like the marriage thing with Cirque. I've tried to comply to society's demands and do what they wanted. But no matter what I did, they always wanted more. And here in Denmark, they... They just all they want in Denmark is for you to to not be a, a thorn in their political shit like I was at home. <laughs> so when you when you go against the system, the system gets really mad. <laughs> they will destroy you. There is nothing the state is not willing to do or say <laughs> to uh, win is the correct term. And I don't know what this is all about because the money's all fake, right? If you understand finance, then you know. The joint illusion is we're trading with currency that's got no backing and it's owned by a third party and you pay interest on it. And all these other technical things that to one group of people mean something, but to the people that use debit cards and get government checks or government pensions or... Uh, state checks because they're like say cops or what else state workers maybe they work for the some kind of energy company there's so many levels of that shit that's just purely politics administration these wasteful freaking politics you know and all their goddamn administration costs when they're not necessary in the first place Get a bike and some batteries and make your own fucking electricity. But if you do, the state will fucking punish you for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we are, back to synthetics. Stuck on the nipple of synthetics till we croak. All of us. Not just you. I'm just uh, revolting against society. That's it. You know, because I, like I was saying about Jerry, Jerry on BitChute, 
that man is actually looking for people to join him to do something to stop the chemtrailing. And whether he's right or wrong isn't even an issue. What the issue is that he's doing it, you know, and doing something, whatever something is, in my mind, my not using fuel as much as much as I can. I do not drive. I do not drive in cars. I do not use public transportation any fucking more. <laughs> but I've decided to live this like it's such simple, easy, comfortable life that it made this possible. So other people don't have that option. I understand that. But if it comes your way, <laughs> I, I strongly recommend losing the trappings of uh, society or at least if nothing else just engage society as little as you possibly have to and spend the um, spend the time that you have doing the things that you enjoy doing like my wife saw that I had an interest in jigsaw puzzles but I wanted to do some big ones and she was like, are you kidding me? So I took a 2000 piece puzzle and I put it together in like four days. <laughs> she said, wow, you're good at that. Let's see. You show somebody what you're good at and all of a sudden they too want you to do it because the finished product is, uh, it's nice, you know, it's nice to, to do something with somebody even when doing it is not physically participating in it, but, you know, supporting that they're doing it. I think they call us cheerleaders when we do that kind of shit. Uh, oh, yeah, Rob works. See, Rob has a... Maybe Rob can come on to the... What's today? Thursday. Rob can come on to the dork... you got to invite to the dork table third Saturday if you want to... Come on and talk about the do's and don'ts of roads. I think me and you could do a, a dark table on that pro, on that topic. J just uh, me and you. And anybody else who want to come in there, maybe Moose Girl want to jump in and argue with me about something. Or Grimnir. Maybe Vinny. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's a dark table. But I did want to do 20% um, off this new podcast I had thought of and I thought of it because Grimm's always had a vacant Thursday night and I thought man nobody ever picks Thursday night I wonder if this amount of shit I'm doing already is not too much well, fuck it let's try one more I figured three times a week ain't it's not seven <laughs> and uh if I could do one show a week alone I can do the other two with others and if nobody joins me on those two I'll still know that that was the intention. So I'll never feel, you know, Vinny and Mary, I don't feel stranded. I'm more comfortable now than I was when I started. Wow. So nervous, like it mattered. And, you know, I was in that fear, that negative, and I wouldn't let any new ideas in. So I had to let it go and get comfortable being aware of this as a viable choice, as an option. To me, opened up a lot of doors. You know, it made me responsible for how I feel about shit. Because as pissed off as I get at Hansel, I've got an ignore button. But sometimes the demon in me likes to come out and play with the retard. So I do. My roads! Who's going to build my roads? Well, if you go onto the internet, there's a little place in Nebraska, I think. Mary put a link up about it. I forget the name of it, but it's an unincorporated town, and the people that live there maintain their own freaking roads. And they're not great roads, but when there's something wears out, they get a shovel and fill it back in. So they've got, like, a gravel roads, I suppose. I can't remember. I saw the link, but it was so long ago, I don't, I don't remember the detail of it. But no sitting government in power. It's just people doing what needed to be done, you know, depending on their availability. Because we're not all lazy fucking slobs that want to sit around and, uh, you know, drink Starbucks coffee and be better than everybody else. Some people... <laughs> are actually human beings that interact with each other and you know just get along 
without all the freaking drama. I haven't seen drama in so long. The, the only drama I get is on the internet. And the only reason I do it is because I'm a drama addict. I grew up in it. I was raised in it. What else do I fucking know? So being nice to people to this day and smiling and all that. Wow, it's so... Sometimes it's... Uh, hmm, what, right, overwhelming is... Nah, that's too much. But it's still uh, striking. You know, I'm not in shock or amazed, or, but it gets my attention in a, in a way that's still new, you know, to see a complete freaking stranger and just, hey, how you doing? And both of you at the same time. And sometimes people walking across the street from me that recognize me, hey, how you doing today? And that kind of familiarity and comfort is, uh, it's a nice thing to have in a time of life where everything's all war and bombs and high prices and, you know, GMOs and synthetics and science is going to beat religion and all kinds of crazy, nasty shit when any organization's goal is to control you. That's what they do. That's the idea. What else could it be? I mean, if I start a cult, what is the point? My cult would be, so I'd lead my cult followers to paradise or whatever the hell a cult leader does. So, no, that that strikes me as kind of wrong. I think uh, we were given the, the, these abilities with living. You know, fuck all this rights and wrong. Oh, I've got the right. No, I've got rights. And oh, fuck you. You got nothing. There's nothing to take and there's nothing to give. <laughs> it's an illusion. They don't take your rights. They kidnap you and put you in a cell. It is not, it is not what you're taught. <clears throat> and this is what I think about this particular the incarceration procedure, you know, the way the way that personal responsibility has been hijacked by this illusion of authority, you know. So you have these uneducated, dick, just dickwads with freaking loaded guns running around enforcing shit. They don't even know what the, what the fuck do they know about enforcing law. Who can read a law book? Who the hell knows what a law is? <laughs> they're, they're, they're out there enforcing codes and statutes, not law. Law doesn't need enforcement. See, what this shit's about is so that people can get revenge and be compensated financially for their losses. But all this illusion of justice? No, that's a bunch of bullshit. Um, the only way to solve all this is to teach people from the ground up the truth. And there is, there's no one universal truth. And they're trying to create one. And the one they're trying to create is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> so, more of the same synthetic crap from the same synthetic fucking sources so that we can go on you know, fucking this planet up. I don't know. I think the planet's got plenty of life left in it and it'll shake it. Like Carlin said, it'll shake us off like dog shakes off fleas. Yeah, it. we may bite at it and irritate it and give it some welts for a while, but eventually the, the fleas are going to all die off. You'll see. And it might take a million years or whatever the hell these science people think, but at the rate that it's going, this is the illusion part of it to me, is they want us to believe in society that it's being destroyed. Okay. Hmm. Why would you want a population to think a horrible thing like that? Could it be that we're easier to control in the wavelength of fear? Hmm. Let us ponder, because if you look at the love-fear thing, you'll judge the word love with all these misguided uh, second-hand stories about what the fucking word means in the first place. Because it's not thought of as a strong word in the English language. <coughs> Real men don't run around using that word, love, 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 love. It sounds kind of gay to me, Johnny. In fear? 
Ah, pussy. Well, no. Fear can save your ass, too. You know, there's a, a positive and a negative. I believe that. I think that, although I don't believe I can be in, in love and fear at the same time, I believe I can shift from one pole of positive and negative in one or the other, but not not opposite. See, they're, well, they're maybe not opposite. They're different. So let's use the word opposites as an identification. So fear and the, and the wavelength of, of love are opposite of each other. Okay. So, but different? No, they're still both wavelengths. So to me, somehow or another... It opened up this doorway that that allowed me to believe for for just that one day at least that I could choose the one I want to be on. Now remembering it, this is what I've been saying on the radio for many times, is that's the hardest part is to be aware of the concept when you need it the most. That's the trouble I've have with it. That's <clears throat> I guess I'm hopefully I'm gonna come to the end of the show here. I'm hopefully going to endure that and get to the other side and, and learn how to control it or maybe not, but being aware of something and uh, doing something about it, maybe they, maybe they are the same thing. Who knows? We'll try to give that some more thought. I'll do this thing. Crazy idea next week. I did do the two. I, uh, wanted to do a, a solo project all by myself and, try to be uh, responsible, you know, and I really enjoy doing radio, thank you so much, Grimner, and what do we got coming up on to the, uh, I could open a schedule, hold on a second, I've got all this good um, work, to, stuff to work with now, I might as well just do it that way, and I think I have a real liberty, no, that's org. I don't have one open. Let me open up a Real Liberty Media schedule. So, uh, da, 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 I'm, no, that's org. Real, I'm on my other computer that I haven't opened up realliberty.com in a while on because I use, um, what's that, um, Ice Chat. I couldn't remember. Ice chat to, and it doesn't need to open real liberty media. It opens up to, it's very hard for me to try to pass this on. Oh no, and I didn't do it right. I was going to open up the schedule. Anyway, I'll try to do the schedule. Uh, today is Thursday. So, tomorrow, and it's the uh, 28th of December 2018. And tomorrow, We've got Grammy Mary coming on the Rocket Chair podcast. And then after Grammy, we got Grim and Moose at the Freakers Ball. The times are on the schedule. I couldn't open up the Real Liberty Media to look at the schedule. So times are going to be on you people. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm doing the best I can. And then we got Saturday. I did the Dork Table. And I'm opening. I've always had. Uh, open door for the dork table if people want to come on Vinny will usually show up if he's around and then uh sunday we've got in the morning we got grim's blues and then he goes into the trivia and then after trivia we got hal anthony comes on behind the woodshed then now monday night uh, i think it's at 7 p.m i'm going off memory i hope i didn't fuck that one up you got Grimm's Leftovers uh, Monday night. He does a, a new fresh thing. He just started a little bit ago. And then Tuesday, I come back again within a perfect world. And again, that was me and Vinny started that. And Vinny had life things change his uh, schedule around. And I inherited it. And I didn't want to give it up because I like doing the radio. And if people like it, um, thanks for joining me with it appreciate it and with that we're gonna say roger wilco over and out